Yeah, well, it feels more like your anvil collection. <laughs> hey, how'd you know there were dolls in here? All these boxes look alike. Because they're all marked. See? S-S-D-M-J-B-L. S-S-D-M-J-B-L? Uh-huh. Susie, Sally, Dorothy, Mary, Janie, Barbara, and Lou. <laughs> oh. Oh, of course. I was a very orderly child. <laughs> Will you look at all this stuff? How come you folks didn't make you clear out all of this junk a long time ago? It isn't junk. Donald, don't you realize my entire life is in these boxes? You know, of course, your apartment isn't big enough for your entire life. Yes, I know that. That's why I thought we'd sort everything out here and we'll only take the most important things back to you. Yeah, we'll just leave room for me. <laughs> oh, Donald! My junior high pom pom! Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, Donald, I can't throw these away. Well, sure. Sure, you never know when someone's going to make a touchdown. <laughs> no heart. I got lots of heart, but I don't keep it in boxes. You mean to tell me you don't save anything? Well, honey, some people are savers and other people are throwers. Basically, I'm a thrower. I wonder if throwers and savers are compatible. Well, your average thrower might throw out your average saver. Your saver, on the other hand, would be inclined to save your thrower. Yeah. Donald, you promise to love me no matter what. Well, I don't know. Why? <laughs> What, what a funny-looking kid. That's what I thought. Look, this you can definitely throw away. Donald, don't you touch that! Why? That's an engagement present. For who? For that girl. Wishbone is an engagement present? Yes. Who gave you an engagement present? Freddie Dunlap. Who's Freddie Dunlap? He's one of my old boyfriends. How old? Fourth grade. <laughs> Donald, do you know that's the first thing a boy ever gave me? Well, he could have had the decency to leave some meat on it. Honey, can we get something to eat? Oh, Donald, please, just a little bit longer. All right. All right, but if Freddie Dunlap ever gave you a sandwich, it's mine. <laughs> And what are these? Those are Freddie Dunlap sneakers. <laughs> Why'd he give you his sneakers? These sneakers happen to have been worn by Freddie when he led the Brewster High basketball team to the All-City Championship. Oh, well, let's have them bronze. <laughs> and I, I suppose that's Freddie Dunlap's mitt. No. Mine. <laughs> left in the car. I mean, I don't want to have anything stolen. Oh, right, right. It all has to go in the Freddie Dunlap Museum. It's not all from Freddie Dunlap. There's stuff from a lot of people, from my relatives and, and other boyfriends. Hey, who's Bunny? Oh, you wouldn't be interested in that. Oh, look at this, my old high school yearbook. Why wouldn't I be interested? You want to see a picture of me in my senior play? 
Annie, who is Bunny? All right. It's Freddie Dunlap. <laughs> he gave it to me for my 18th birthday. 18th? Well, well, why did you call him uh, Bunny? Did he have big ears? No. I called him Bunny because his front teeth were sort of prominent. Oh. Oh, he had buck teeth? <laughs> he did not. It was just an overbite. You know, Freddie Dunlap was a very attractive boy and pretty bright, too. He was only president of the student body. Oh, yeah? Hmm. Well, I wouldn't have voted for him. Donald, I think you're jealous. Jealous? I am not jealous. I'm not, no, I'm not jealous. I'm just well, sick and tired of hearing about him, that's all. Donald, isn't this silly? We are fighting over somebody I haven't even seen since I was 18. Yeah, yeah, right. Absolutely right. Okay, I'm gonna go get some pizzas. Okay. I'll make a salad. You know, you could have at least told me about him. Well, you've never told me about any of your old girlfriends. All right, all right, let's just drop the subject. <laughs> Judy, you want to come next door and split a can of chili with me? Why? Where's Leon? Oh, he's delivering a baby at Columbia University. As a part of a class? No, as part of a family. One of the teachers there is a patient of his. Oh. <laughs> hey, what are you doing? Oh, I'm going through all my old souvenirs and trying to figure out what to keep. Oh. I I is this what you're keeping? No, that's what I have finally decided to throw away. You're going to throw this away? <laughs> and they don't put these on cars anymore. It's probably very valuable. Yeah, you're right. I'll keep it. <laughs> wow. A Martin and Lewis scrapbook. Gee. Now, this has great sentimental value. You're right. I'll keep it. You really should. Well, I'll bet there aren't many of those around. I guess I got a little rash. <laughs> Look what fell out of your autograph book. Oh, my gosh. That's Freddie Dunlap's mother's ring. Who's Freddie Dunlap? Oh, he's a boy I used to go with. He gave me this ring because we were kind of engaged to be pinned. And you never gave it back? Well, I, I couldn't give it back. I mean, he left town. And you really should call him and give it back. Give what back? Freddie Dunlap's mother's ring. Freddie Dunlap's mother gave you a ring? Well, actually, Freddie gave it to me. Oh, oh, terrific. Oh, Donald, let's not start that again. Man, a chicken bone is one thing, but a ring. Well, what chicken bone? Look, well, forget the chicken bone. Uh, that's a very good idea. I think I'll go home and forget the chicken bone, and you two can discuss the ring. Look, if Freddie Dunlap doesn't mean anything to you, why'd you keep his ring? I didn't keep his ring. I just merely forgot to return it. And then he moved away. Oh. Oh, well, I, I, I guess that sounds logical. It really doesn't, but I'll accept it for now because I'm hungry. Come on, let's eat these before they get cold. All right. This one is pepperoni and anchovies. Only this side doesn't have any anchovies because I remember you didn't like it. And this one is straight mushrooms because... And you're not paying attention. I should send it back. Why, you like mushrooms. No, I mean, I should send back that ring. Okay. Okay, put it in an envelope and mail it to him. Well, I don't know where he lives. Well, I thought you told me he lived in California. Oh, fine. I'll just send it to Freddie Dunlap, California. Well, th don't you know anyone that might know his address? Georgie Ponder. He was one of Freddie's best friends, and he lives in Brooklyn now. Well, then it's simple. Just call Georgie uh, of Ponder and ask for Freddie's address. You won't mind? No, no. Anything to get that ring out of this house. <laughs> You're not really jealous, are you? No, no. I mean, I just want you to get this whole thing out of your system. I'm not really upset about Freddie. <laughs> After all, the guy lives 3,000 miles away. <laughs> Hello, is this Georgie Ponder? Hi, Georgie. This is Anne Marie. <laughs> right. Oh, I just fine. And how are you? Good. Yes, we simply must get together sometime. Uh, but in the meantime, do you happen to have Freddie Dunlap's address? What? Oh, uh, 7.35? Right. Thank you, Georgie. Uh-huh. We'll see you real soon. Bye. Do you have it? Yes. Well, send it airmail. I don't think planes fly between here and 73rd Street. <laughs> Freddie is in New York? Well, 
five blocks from here is definitely New York. Uh-huh. Well, mail it to him anyway. Oh, Donald, I can't mail him the ring now. You can't send somebody a letter with a return address five blocks away. You want to see him again, right? Go ahead, admit it. You want to see him again. All right, I admit it. But just to see him, not to see him. What does that mean? Well, of course I want to see him again, but it's only natural curiosity. Oh, yeah. Yeah, curious to see if perhaps there isn't something still there. All right, Donald, I know what I'll do. I'll take the ring and I'll throw it away. And that way, Freddie Dunlap's mother will never have her ring back. Oh, yeah. Now I'm supposed to say go ahead and see him. Only if you mean it. All right. All right. Go ahead and see him. I don't care. Won't bother me a bit. You don't mean it. Well, nobody's perfect. Just do it. <laughs> okay. God, that's it. I'm starving to death. Oh, I just love mushrooms. Here, Donald. Here's a nice big piece for you. Donald, you're not paying attention. What? Oh, oh I'm, I'm sorry. You want some pizza? Yeah, okay. I'll have a, I'll have a slice of the one with the Freddies. <laughs> one makes me look young. That's good. No, that's bad. I don't want Freddie to think I'm still a child. Well, here, try this one. What time is it? It's 11.30. Oh, my gosh. I told him I'm in with the restaurant at noon. Oh, this is just like a movie. The two lovers torn apart in the bloom of love, finally reunited. Boy, if you got the wrong picture. Well, aren't you reuniting with Freddie? Only as close friends. How can you think of him as a close friend when you're sitting there in that intimate booth, sharing wine and caviar. More like skim milk and a tuna sandwich. <laughs> he eats that? Not him, me. Oh, he's so unromantic. Doesn't it make you at all nervous to know that you're going to meet an old boyfriend? Oh, Judy, don't be silly. It's like I'm having lunch with a brother. This one makes me look so old. What do you care? He's just your brother. <laughs> Even though he's an old boyfriend, I'd still like to look nice. You know, there was a boy I went with all through high school. I finally threw him over when I met Leon. Well, last month I saw him for the first time in years. He's worth $12 million now. $12 million? This is too cheap looking. <laughs> Here, wear this one. Hey, now that's not bad. Very good. Okay, I'll wear this one. Now, have I got everything? I've got my purse, I've got my gloves, the rings in the purse. <laughs> I'm ready. Okay. Let's go. So glad you were here to help me. Oh, it's my pleasure. Wait a minute. What's wrong? I don't think I'll wear the hat. <laughs> Oh. oh, so good to see you. Oh, it's good to see you, too. Oh, gee, Annie, you haven't changed at all. Uh, really? Well, you look a little different. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I got my teeth fixed. Oh, I guess I can't call you Bunny anymore. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it's been so long since anybody's called me that. <laughs> Boy, it really brings back memories. Hey. You know what I found the other day? You remember that little rabbit you once gave me? Do you still have that? Uh-huh. And I have a lot of other things, too. Oh, no kidding. Do you remember the time you gave me that little rabbit? Uh, the county fair? No. <laughs> no. Don't tell me. It was, um, Johnny Franklin's barbecue. Exactly. <laughs> hey, that was the night Mary Jane Gerber lost her potato in the cheese dip. <laughs> 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 and it's been ages since, I, since I've laughed this morning. <laughs> me too. <laughs> oh, it's meant a lot for me to see you. Well, I've been pretty down lately. Yeah, why? What's wrong? Oh, I don't want to bother you with my problems. Oh, Freddie, you can tell me anything. You're my oldest and dearest friend. Well, it's my wife. Oh, you're married? Didn't I tell you about Nancy? Oh, well, that just shows how upset I've been. Gee, I never thought you might be married. Well, the way I'm married, I might as well not be. Would you like to talk about it? Uh, Anne, you're the one person I could really discuss it with. Well, then you just consider the discussion open. 
Well, I really don't want to talk about it now. And would it be all right if I called you sometime? It really would help a lot. Well, well sure, Freddie. Why can't we just talk about it now? Because right now I've got to talk about it with my lawyer. Oh, that bad, huh? Thank goodness there are no kids. He tried to cover up, but I could tell right away that he was just heartbroken. So he's married, huh? <laughs> Donald, you really don't have any heart. Oh, my wife doesn't understand me. Boy, I've heard that line before. <laughs> I'd like to see what you'd do if you saw Loretta Fitch again. Look, will you forget Loretta Fitch? I have. She's married to a college professor. They have three children, two dogs, a motorcycle, and a car. <laughs> What's her area code? Look, don't turn it around. I am not interested in Loretta Fitch. And I am not interested in Freddie Dunlap. Uh-huh. But what about Freddie Dunlap? We don't know who he's interested in. Meaning what? Meaning you. Uh, I'll know. All right. All right, what did he say when he gave back the ring? The ring? Oh, my gosh, I forgot to give him back the ring. Aha! Uh -huh. What aha? Uh -huh? You kept that ring so you could see him again. I kept that ring simply because I forgot to give it back to him. All right. All right. This time, you're going to save yourself a lot of trouble by mailing it to him. Look, I'll even give you the stamp. Oh, Donald, I can't do that. He'll think I'm deserting him just when he really needs a friend. Annie. Annie, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble by encouraging this guy. I'm not encouraging him. He just wants someone to tell his problems to. Yeah, well, let him write Dear Abby. <laughs> Wait a minute. I know how I can fix the whole thing. Well, who are you calling? Freddie. Freddie. Hello, Freddy. Hi, it's Ann. Oh, I'm just fine, thank you. And you? Oh, Freddy, I'm so sorry. Oh, of course I'd love to talk about it. Listen, why don't you come over for dinner tomorrow night? No, I'd love to have you. I'll fix you a nice home-cooked meal. Okay, I'll see you about eight. All righty, bye. You sure fixed everything. Inviting him to your apartment was the perfect solution. I happen to have the situation completely under control. I'm going to have him over for dinner, give him back the ring, and everything is going to be just fine, because you'll be there. I'll be there. That's right. And once and for all, Donald, you'll be able to see what a really nice guy Freddy is. Oh, uh, no. Oh, no, you don't. No, sir. I am not going to sit around all evening and listen to some guy's problems. Then you're admitting I'm right? No. No, not at all. But the only way I can prove that I'm right is if he makes a pass at you, and he's not going to do that if I'm there. Then you're not coming? Nope, not coming. Nope. Okay, have it your way. But I think you're making a big mistake. You know, you and Freddie could be the greatest of friends. You have so much in common. Yeah, we sure do. You. <laughs> Come on in. Hello, Anne. Uh, here, I, uh, I bought something for you. Oh, you didn't have to do that. Oh, well, you were nice enough to invite me, so I wanted to bring you something. Well, thank you. But I don't want you to feel like a guest here. I want you to think of this as your home. Uh, hey, this is uh, a very nice apartment. Uh, you live here alone? Uh-huh. Oh. Now, why don't you sit down? Everything's uh. just about ready. I bet it's been a long time since you've had a nice home-cooked meal. <laughs> it sure has. Uh, Nancy stopped cooking when she uh, burned her hand taking a TV dinner out of the oven. I bet it's been rough on you, Freddie. Yeah. Yeah, my wife just doesn't understand me. <laughs> it sure is good to have someone like you to turn to, though. Freddie, we've been friends for so long, you know you can tell me anything. Uh, thanks. Hey, I have an idea. Why don't we talk over a glass of wine? Uh, yes, I'd like that. I'll get some glasses. This is going to make you feel a whole lot better. You'll see. Uh, allow me. Okay. Oh, Freddie. I don't want you to think you're going to be boring me. I mean, I really want to hear everything. I think I can maybe help you. To us. Well, how did it go with your lawyer? 
Ah, uh, let's not talk about that. Let's talk about you. Oh, that's not very interesting. Oh, I'm glad you put the music on. Oh, yeah, I love music. Don't you? Yes, very much. Oh, Freddie, I'm so upset that your marriage didn't work out. Uh, I never could communicate with Carol. Carol? I thought your wife's name was Nancy. Oh, did I say Carol? <laughs> yeah, Carol was my first wife. Oh, Freddie. I had no idea. I don't like to talk about Carol. It was a pretty messy divorce. Now I understand why you're so upset about Nancy. Well, let's not talk about Nancy. No, Freddie, you've got to talk about it. That's the only way you'll get it out of your system. Well, all right. Well, we're right after Betty and I broke up. Oh, you went Betty? To... <laughs> you were married three times? You know, I was engaged to Betty between Carol and Nancy. You see, I met Betty when now, we... Now, wait a minute before we go any further. Is there anybody else aside from Betty and Carol and Nancy? Well, I had no one in mind until you called me. What do you mean? Oh, come on now. We're both adults. I don't know what you're talking about. At least I hope I don't. Well, I know you kept that ring so we could get together again. That's just what Don said. Yeah, who's Don? The fellow who's gonna punch you in the nose if you don't stop following me. Wait a minute. Here, here, you can have your little ring. I wish I never found it in the first place. Uh, Finders keepers. You really need a keeper. Okay, the music stopped. Get back in your chair. The game's over. What game? Musical maniacs, and you're it. Listen, baby, you're the one who called me. Oh, we're only out of friendship. You, well, you're not being very friendly. You're like a bad movie. <laughs> Playing hard to get, huh? Not hard, Freddie. Impossible. Come on, Annie. Just quit stalling. Freddie Dunlap, I'm gonna tell your mother. <laughs> what? You heard me. I'm gonna tell your mother, and you know what she'll say. Oh, no, that's a pretty rotten trick. I mean, you're not playing fair. I am not playing, and I wish you'd leave. Well, if I leave, would you promise never to tell my mother? Yes. All right, then, I'll leave. <laughs> and I'll never come over here again. Who is it? Uh, Just a minute, Donald. Hi. Hi. Uh, has Freddie left already? Oh, yes. Well, I'm, uh, I'm sorry I missed him. I, I was just in the neighborhood, and I, well, I thought I'd drop by and say hello. Oh, that was very nice of you. You really should have dropped by a lot earlier. Uh, did you have a nice time? Nice, very nice. So is everything all right with his wife? Well, as well as can be expected. <laughs> Annie, look, I, I've been thinking over about what I said was going to happen, and obviously, uh... I apologize. Oh, Donald, there's no need for you to apologize. Oh, yes, yes, there is. Now, look, I, I, now that I'm here, I can see that there was absolutely nothing to worry about. <laughs> well, let's just drop the whole thing, all right, Donald? I don't think it's right to be an I told you so type of person. Do you? Well, honey, that's very sweet of you, and I, I mean, especially since all the trouble I've caused. Well, it isn't very nice for a person who's right to rub things in when somebody else is wrong, <laughs> is it? Right. Yes, right. You're right. I mean, if the positions were reversed, you'd be very understanding, too. Wouldn't you? Of course. Yeah, of course. Good. Because the positions are reversed. <laughs> what? Well, never mind. I'll, I'll tell you all about it at the incinerator. Well, what are we going to do at the incinerator? We are going to burn Freddy. <laughs> You know, I wish I got here earlier. That guy'd have to fix his teeth again. No, I shouldn't listen to you in the first place. No, no, wait a minute. I'm glad you didn't. If you had, we'd still be looking for a place to store this. Place. <laughs> oh, Donald, look. This is the certificate I got in grade school for perfect spelling. Oh, yeah? All right. All right, spell certificate. C-E-R-T-I-F-A-C-A-T-E. -E. Well, you didn't deserve it anyway. I guess I'm a little rusty. Okay, here goes my autograph book. Here goes the program for the neurotic giraffe. Ah, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute, didn't we see this play together? Oh, that's right, we did. All right. All right, you save it. This will be the first item in your Don Hollinger collection. <laughs>